Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at words 9 and 10 of subframe 1. They contain correction coefficients that we're going to need in order to calculate how far off the parameters of the ephemeras in each satellite will be from the true values depending upon how much time has elapsed from when those values were absolutely accurate. And so again, what we have here is we're given every so many hours, we're given a set of ephemeris parameters. And so if they didn't change as the satellite moved, they would be the same over a period of, let's say, four hours. But we do know that they do change and we need to account for that. And the account can be, the change can be modeled by a quadratic equation. And a quadratic equation, of course, has a constant term a power to the first term and a power to the second term and so when we can find this particular uh, curve so to speak in equation format we can then calculate what the time difference would be between the perfect orbit and the actual orbit as it occurs we can then allow for that time difference and then recalculate the exact ephemeris parameters for the satellite so in word 9 and 10, what does it contain? In word 9, we have what we call the A sub F2, which, can, which is 8 bits long. We have an A sub F1, which is 16 bits long, and A sub F0, which is 22 bits long. And the value of the LSB of each of those, notice that for the A of 0, the LSB is 2 to the minus 55. The units are seconds divided by seconds squared. The LSB of the AF sub AF1 is 2 to the minus 43, the units are second over seconds, and the value, the LSB for the AF2 is 2 to the minus 31, and the units are seconds. They're necessary, of course, when they're plugged in to our quadratic equation. So, what does the equation look like? Well, we're trying to find the difference between the SV time and, the, and then, of course, we want to adjust the true time would be the SV time or the adapted time, I should say, is the SV time minus the delta SV. And how do we calculate the delta SV? Well, first of all, we need the TOC, the time of the clock, as we saw in word eight. In word eight, we gave you the time of clock, so we want to know what time of the week it is, so we can then find out where we are on this curve. So the time of clock will give us an indication where on this curve we're going to be, how far away we are from that perfect time. And notice the LSB of the TLC was 16 seconds, so it wasn't that important over a four-hour period if we're off by a few seconds. But then we take the difference between the time and the TLC, wherever we are. Uh, so how far off are we from this perfect center of that four-hour period? And the difference of that time is then either multi, uh, raised to the first power or raised to the second power. So this is a quadratic equation where T minus TLC, how far we are off from that perfect time where we know the ephemeris data is perfectly accurate, well, that becomes your variable x, so to speak. When you think of y equals x, you know, ax squared plus bx plus c, well, we have a similar format here where x is now the difference between the perfect spot on time and where we actually are in time. So then we have these coefficients, you know, the, the constant coefficient A of zero, which is right here. The coefficient of the, f t t uh, the term to the first power is A of one, and the coefficient of the term to the second power is A of two. And those are then contained within word nine and word 10. Those are then, of course, necessary because those will then determine how much your error will be from the ephemeris data that would be perfect for the ephemeris data that it actually is. Notice we have one more correction term. We have that delta T sub R, where delta T sub R is the relativistic correction term because we, of course, being that far away from the Earth's gravi gravitational field, we can see that time will run a little faster. And then because the satellites move so, fa so fast, time will run a little bit slower. So we do have to adjust for that relativistic correction. Um, and then, of course, we need to add that to the error where we might be in time for that delta SV. So then we can calculate what the time error will be based upon that calculation, that quadratic equation, and then we can then adjust the parameters for we get for the ideal situation, we then have to adjust it for the parameters of the actual situation. And that's how we keep the ephemeris data fairly accurate for a certain number of hours at a time. Typically, we send up ephemeris data in four hour chunks, so we can have six of those chunks in a, in a 24 hour day, 
and then we know the exact position of each of the chunks at the middle of that range, but then we want to adjust for it when we move away, either in front or behind that perfect time for that particular set of data, and then we can adjust for the ephemeris data to give it to make it as accurate as possible. So that is what needs to be done to make sure we know exactly what the locations of the satellites are. And that is how we do that using words 9 and 10 and suffering 1.